what Natalie's saying is, you know, I don't feel comfortable leaving my baby to cry during sleep training because I've read, you know, recently uh, that it could increase his cortisol levels, it could alter his brain chemistry, and that really worries me. And I hear this a lot from parents, and I completely understand this. I feel the exact same way. I remember when my daughter was young, and she was waking up all night long, and then I was online, you know, reading everything online, and, you know, this is what you have to do. No, you can't do that because you'll hurt your baby. So this is what you should do. No, you can't do that because you'll hurt your baby. It's just, it really... It really spins us moms and dads out. It could, we're overwhelmed, and the last thing we ever want to do is anything that might harm our baby. And that's completely, I completely understand that. Um, so I have a few different things to, to say about um, this topic. So the first thing I would say to you, Natalie, though, is if you're feeling uncomfortable about getting your little guy to sleep better, if you're feeling uncomfortable with the method that you have decided on, then you don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do or anything that makes you uncomfortable. That's it. You don't have to do it. There are a million different ways that you can teach your little guy to sleep better. So if you're feeling that one way is not the right method and it does not resonate with you and you're feeling you know, guilty and torn and your baby's really resisting it, then you don't have to do it. There's plenty of other methods that we can come up with to get your little guy sleeping well at night. So let's do that. So that should take some of you know the, the stress away and the, um, the turmoil. That should hopefully lessen that for you. You don't have to do it. Um, we can come up with a different way. So a lot of these voices online, when they're talking about the cortisol levels and the stress of sleep training, they're talking about either extinction or they're talking about controlled crying. So unless you're doing one of these methods, again, it's not that's not your situation, so you shouldn't let it upset you and you shouldn't let it stress you out because you're doing a different method. So Natalie is in my 21 Days to Peace and Quiet program and in this program I have at the moment four different pathways for you to take when you want to teach your little one to sleep better. So we, ha we do have some quick plans, some really efficient plans such as the controlled crying but then on the other end we've got a super gentle uh, flexible minimal tears plan and then I've got some middle of the road options, right? But the majority of these plans, you stay with your baby the whole time while you teach him to sleep better. So again, this would not be the same as you know what these, what these other research studies online are saying about higher cortisol levels, right? Because the idea is this, your baby cries because he's upset because you're changing habits on him, you're asking him to do something differently. And you know when we all cry and get really stressed or upset, our cortisol levels rise. And um, that's to be expected. It happens on a daily basis for most of us. And you know, it certainly happens for babies when they cry. And I think the thing that's the most uh, upsetting for a lot of parents is when you decide to teach your baby to sleep better, it's usually the first time that you're asking your baby to change habits or to do something differently. So I, I wanna take a minute just to talk about the research study that basically started all of this talk online. The whole, the very first cortisol study um, that came out when investigating sleep training. And this was done by a researcher named Middlemiss and I would say it's about 10 or so years ago and she was a researcher in Texas. And she did a research study um, and she basically wanted to investigate when we take babies into a hospital setting and we want to teach them to sleep through the night. So we have the moms put the babies down to bed and then the moms leave the room. And these nurses come in and the nurses put the babies down and then the nurses, you know, I don't even think they attended to them in the night. I think it was full on extinction. And what this woman came to, her, her conclusion was that sleep training was terrible for babies. She tested their cortisol levels and they were higher and they remained higher even after they learned to sleep and that they were um, not aligned with the mom anymore. So the mom's stress had gone down but the babies hadn't. Now the thing about this study is over the many, many years that it's been out, it has been deemed multiple times by multiple different researchers who have gone in to review it and scrutinize it and really try to figure out if if this research study was valid, they have come back and all basically said it's flawed and it's, it's biased, it's, it's not a proper research study. I'm not gonna go into all the details. You can certainly find it out online and I will post a link under the video. Um, but for one thing, uh, if you know a little bit about statistics and research, so she had no control group. So one of the basics of a rigorous um, experimental study is having an experimental group and a control group. So she had no control group to compare these little babies to. She had a very small sample. I think she started with 25 babies and by the end of it, it ended up just being 10. 
a lot of the data that she presented uh, wasn't um, it wasn't the full data. So she submitted data from nights one and three when she tested the cortisol levels, but she didn't submit it from nights two, four, and five. So she we're not sure why she never said, but she only submitted data on certain days. Um, many of the subjects dropped out of the study, which often happens, you know, and we can accommodate for that. But it went from a small research study to an even smaller research study, so a lot of them dropped out. And again, it was also done in a hospital setting where the nurses put the babies down and the nurses um, attended to them through the night, which is completely different than what we would be doing when we're getting our babies to sleep better, right? We would be in a home environment and it would be, you know, mom and dad typically who were getting the babies to sleep better. So all of that could have contributed to more stress in the babies, which could have resulted in higher cortisol levels. But again, without all of the data being present and without it really being basically a good research study, it's unfortunate because it was the first one that came out and it got a lot of attention and suddenly all these parents were thinking they were doing terrible harm to their baby. And it really, you know, it's, it's a real disservice because it does scare a lot of parents. Now since then, there's been lots of research done on specific sleep training methods and with the focus on do they harm babies? Because if it does, we don't wanna do it. We don't wanna do anything close to it, right? I mean, we're all loving and attentive and responsive parents. We don't wanna do anything to hurt our little ones, right? We just wanna teach them to sleep better. So, you know, can we figure out if this is safe? multiple studies done in you know multiple countries and different subjects and, and larger robust studies done and also meta-analyses done where they look at several studies they lump them together and they really try to decipher now again the easiest method of sleep training to investigate is extinction and controlled crying because it's sort of more regimented and easy to follow so those are the types of sleep training methods that have been investigated and by and large, you know, what they did is they looked at a control group and they looked at the kids that went through the sleep training and they studied them not only at the time that they were in the study, but they followed up with them a year later, five years later, and even up to 10 years later. And they were looking specifically at these kids and saying, is there any difference in their emotional development? Is there any difference in these kids that were sleep trained? Is there any difference in their bonding with their parents? Are these kids more withdrawn? Are they more anxious? Is there any difference between these children who went through sleep training and the kids that didn't go through sleep training? And at 12 months and at five years and at 10 years, what these researchers have seen, and which has been validated by other researchers going in and saying, yeah, that's actually quite a good study, is that there are no differences in these kids. So no differences in bonding, no differences in emotional development. They're not more withdrawn, they're not more anxious, they're not more despondent, none of it. These kids are the exact same as you would expect them to be as the kids that didn't go through sleep training. So I mean, that's huge. Um, also they showed uh, that the, the kids that went through sleep training, the mom's moods were improved right then, like as they went through the study. They were also studying the moms and the mom's level of bonding and attachment and the maternal moods. And they found that the moms who did the sleep training, their moods increased significantly uh, compared to the moms who, who didn't because they were still tired. So I hope that that helps you, Natalie, and for you other parents out there that are feeling a bit lost and uh, hopeless and overwhelmed thinking that there's only one way to teach my baby to sleep. That's definitely not the case. There are many, many ways. And so if you need any help with that, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you out.